Time to talk golf. It's that time of week, Tuesday, and it's a morning. That gives us more than enough time to prepare for this Thursday's event on the PGA Tour in Phoenix. The Super Bowl, of course, coming up on Sunday. So, a lot going on. Jared, uh, we thought th- things were going to get smushed um, with the weather, and then yeah. all of a sudden, I, uh, I, 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 I wanted to find out what time they were going to tee off, <laughs> and and I saw the something I hadn't seen in a long time, so I was confused. I, I, I you know, especially until I saw the. Uh, postponed due to inclement weather deal after 54 holes and wow uh i'm happy it only happens once every whatever eight years and that's important uh because i slam nascar uh all the time and try to compare why the pga tour does it right regarding weather and because nascar is terrible with it nascar won't like if they have a race at three or four o'clock and they know rain's coming in at three or four o'clock, they will not switch <laughs> and move the race early the way the golf would. Yeah. And then you're waiting until Monday or Tuesday sometimes for, for NASCAR or, or late at night or whatever, we have to shorten. So I always look at golf as a good example. And this is why, because this only happens once every seven or eight years, which is why I'm okay with it. But other than that, it's awful. It's absolutely awful. Um, uh, uh, good for you and Wyndham Clark on your fantasy team, that's for sure. But <laughs> other than that, Wyndham Clark was not winning this event. I'm sorry, he just wasn't. He had a 60. Uh, he had never done anything at this golf course before until he had one great round. Anybody who shoots a 60 one day is always going to come back down to earth the next day. Um, <laughs> th- there were so many good players that were ready to pounce. Uh, so he got a break, and uh, whoever took him in fantasy uh, got a break. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's one of those things you just hate to see. It's just, uh, uh, unless somebody's like five shots up or it's a weak event, nobody really cares, but this is a signature event with a lot of money on the line and a lot of good players on the leaderboard. It's just, it's, uh, it was sad to see it uh, end that way. Yeah, totally. Um, and I, I'm with you. I, not, not that Clark couldn't have won, but I, I wouldn't have picked him to win. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know who, who you had in your final betting card, but I know I had um, I had Justin Thomas and Mark Hubbard, kind of you know within striking distance. That was so a I great was pick, by the way, Mark Hubbard, man. Yeah, good one. Yeah, he, where he, was he? What was his uh, odds? Yeah. I got him at three hundred. I think by the time we recorded, he was like one fifty. I want to say, but yeah, his, so his top five, made, you, uh, you would have made out with a top five bet. Yeah, you could have top five him. That would have worked. Um, it's it just. Tough to, I'm not sure what the PGA Tour could have done in this specific case. I don't think they could have jammed the 72 holes into three days because you had the you had the amateurs out there on Thursday and Friday. I don't think there's enough daylight to try to get all 80 players to Apparently play 36 not. holes on, on Saturday. This, yeah. The course the course is already super. I mean, they were they were balls plugging in the fairway. You know, they obviously did the lift clean in place. Um, all three days. It's just a tough situation. It sucks. Um, but yeah, good, good for Wyndham. Good for people that bet Wyndham Clark. I know he hadn't done anything at this course in the past, but really he, he should have been a bat just based on the number. He was 80 to one, I think on DraftKings. He was a hundred to one in some other places. Just a guy who won the U S open yeah. last year. Crazy. Um, won, won another, won another. He also won an elevated event last year. He won the Wells Fargo last year. So just based on the number, um, you know, he, he's someone I wish, I had gotten on, um, but didn't didn't quite get to him. Again, this just shows you the depth. Even with the exodus of certain players to the live tour, there's still a it's just still a very quality deep, and these major events on top of it. When you have all these excellent players, and then like you said, I mean, it, it's it sometimes it doesn't matter. So it's tough to handicap golf because you do don't know when a great player is again. Wyndham Clark had shown nothing. And then showed nothing the first two days, and then boom, yep. sixty. And uh, and again, he got the break of breaks. Yeah, and he also had one of the most absurd putting performances I've ever seen. And we t- we talk about all the time how putting is volatile; yep. it's tough to predict. And he he is a good putter, so it's not like it came out of nowhere. But you do not expect he, I he made like twenty five more feet of putts than anyone had ever <laughs> made at Pebble Beach. Um, just you know, just insane. Although he did he did leave his last three putts short 
Um, he just needed to make one one of them to shoot a 59. That was disappointing to see him not get any of those last three putts to the hole. I think all three of them had a chance to go in if he had hit them. Well, that makes a lot of sense considering he had a course record. So you're going to you're gonna do stuff like that. And, yep. uh, th- again, that's why it's really tough. Um, you almost wish it would have happened in the final round, of course, to legitimize it, but it is what it is. It's in the past, and uh, we'll see what happens next year. Uh, because there was only w- there's only one event this year, right? It was Pebble, it was new, and who was mm-hmm. which event was taken out? Do you, do you recall? Uh, waste management. Okay, there you go. So uh, that's it. There's only one change yep. this year from last year. So I'm not sure exactly what they've got planned for next year, but right. y- you would think that. Who knows? Maybe there's just three year increments. I don't know. But they just started last year and they made a switch just like that. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it wasn't really, to be honest with you, um, I don't know. Uh, that's why you get robbed out of Sunday because who knows what would have happened. It could have really made the event that much more uh, thrilling. But yeah. um, it was a very, just to take a look at the variety when you looked at the leaderboard. And you had guys like Rory McIlroy and my pick, uh, one and done pick, Xander Shoffley, and your pick, Max Homa, doing absolutely nothing when everything pointed towards those guys competing this that this this past week. And then and then you know and then and then you did have legitimate players competing that mm-hmm. you said, okay, there you go. There's Scheffler, there's JT, and so forth. So, but I guess that's what you want. You know, you want a course that, and you want yeah. the competition where you just, hey, you know, it's not like, uh, it's not, hey, it's Rory and, and, and Xander and Max, they had every bit of an opportunity to have a great week like all those other great players, but for some reason, they just couldn't do it. I don't know why, but they couldn't. Yeah, well, we, we talked about last week how a lot of those guys, you know, Homa, excluding Homa, don't don't play this event usually. You know, they, they hadn't played True. Pebble Beach since the U.S. Open. Yep. And you had guys, on the other hand, like Cantlay and Day, who were coming off disappointing performances at Torrey Pines, who played well at Pebble like they do every year. So I think it's it's definitely a course to you know, keep in mind for next year that you know guys like Cantlay and Day just seem to play well there every year, you know, regardless of how they played the, the, the previous week. All right. So we've got Phoenix this week, and nowhere near – the uh the field of course from last year since it's not a signature event and because the signature of, and being sandwiched in between signature events with the genesis coming up next week so um uh, that's going to make it interesting for the players who did decide uh, to play this week because you know they're going to play next week uh, and then they're definitely taken off because what the week after that's in mexico i believe um after yeah, genesis that's right. and yeah, so that's the, right. yeah so uh some of these guys decided uh, to play on through, and uh, I think we only have like five, uh, four in the top ten, I believe. Uh, Scotty Scheffler, and then, matter of fact, I'll just pop up here. Uh, this is the DraftKings uh, odds, the latest odds you can see uh, just looking at it there. Scheffler, uh, Scheffler, Homa, uh, Clark, Harmon, and Fitzpatrick, I believe, are those the top ten players that are playing this week. Now, that's interesting because get this. This is a really strange couple of strange trends going on at Phoenix. So uh, speaking of top 10, all right, I couldn't believe this. Matter of fact, I had no idea until yesterday when I was doing the research when the world rankings came out, what year. And I found out doing the research for this event because I had to look I, – I kept – thinking well all right has to be next has to be next year has to be the next year has to be the next year i was waiting for the first top 10 ranked player that had won this event for the first time and i couldn't find him all the way down till the very first player that you could tell the world ranking uh body had actually kept rankings and it started uh a couple of years prior which was uh, 1986, but I guess they didn't like when they looked at the rankings. Like you know, where did you start? Where did you end during the event? They didn't really. It doesn't seem like they started tracking that until like a ni- couple years later. So, Mark Kalkovecchia, who won this event 
uh, back in 1989 is the only player that was ranked in the top 10 before winning here the first time. Now, Kalkovecchia won this event several times. Scheffler did, Matsuyama did, Kepka did, so forth. So you don't count the second wins, you count the first. How crazy is that? And by the way, Kalkovecchia was 10th. That means you've never had a player inside the top 10, nine all the way to one, that's ever won this event for the first time. That I, I find that really crazy. Well, that's even crazier, too, because you don't get a lot of long shot winners winning here either, right? Uh, True. I, I, looked at, I looked at the odds of the winners. Nine straight winners of this event have been between 11 to one and 50 to one. Yeah. So, you know, n- sure. nothing at the super top of the board, but also nothing beyond 50 to 1. Oh, and, and, and it shows you, too, because only one of the last 16 winners were ranked outside the top 100. One is 16. And you, I, I think you had the trend, too. A lot of winners here have won majors, I think. I think yes. The, the U.S. Open, especially. The, the players, I think, is kind of a crossover. 10 of the last 11. Both yep. Had a, had a major so again, win. Yeah, and so nine of nine of the that, eleven had major wins. Yeah, so it's the takeaway is it is it tends to be higher end players who win this event. Um, I, I I built my betting card accordingly. Not that um, only one of my three bets has has won a major, but um, you know, not, none of them them are uh, you know outside that fifty to one range. Yeah, it, that it it is one of those events that you kind of like. Well, it looks so easy in a way. Like, all right, come on. You got Scheffler and JT. I mean, come on. Uh, I know Scheffler's won two straight years, but maybe he'll win three straight. Uh, So it's like uh, you have those players. uh, And then – but it's still – let's just keep this in mind because we went into last week talking about, well, signature event. Everything's going to change. All the craziness that went on in the first few weeks, that's going to change now. Well, yeah, Wyndham Clark won, but first of all, let's keep in mind, it wasn't a four-round event. That's number one. Number two, where did he come from? Like you said, he was 80-1. to one. Nobody expected Wyndham Clark to win. So that was still, an, under the situation, another like, well, nobody expected it. So we had another week on the PGA Tour where nobody really expected it. And I'm, I'm, that's why I think, yeah, I mean, you you have to take a look at those guys this week, especially when Scheffler's odds are like 5-1 to one and JT's 10-1. to one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And you know, Scheffler was funny. I, I, I look at um, Data Golf a lot, um, and they do pre-tournament projections basically what these god guys odds are to win and you know they have scheffler's you know true value at plus 530 so you know not far from what he's actually listed at so you know he he kind of is deserving of being plus 500 and the the big reason is you know one he's scotty scheffler the ball striking is always awesome he has he has putted really well at this event which is always his problem like if you you know if scheffler putts well He's probably going to win. Yeah, and that's you know that's what he's done at this event, and that's why he's won the last two years. Let's just run through uh, the rest of the odds here. So, uh, matter of fact, I mean Ben on is down to twenty five to one. Uh, you know, so it just shows you. Uh, and there's a lot. Look, there's a lot of quality players from that twenty five to. 50 to 60 to one range, which is kind of what, you know, you said that's, that's a really good, that's a really good area to, to look at. Mm-hmm. And I mean, even a hot player like D, uh, 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 Dietrich is 65 to one. And uh, so you are still going to have some good numbers uh, to go at. And matter of fact, I have a really crazy long shot this week that we'll get into a little bit later. Uh, and I, and I just think it's a perfect type the way things are going. I think it's uh why not go with a crazy long shot uh and a few other guys that is that are under the radars so let's take a look at your stats and we'll pop them so why yeah you, go you know the, yeah the event history matches what we were talking about you know, high end players winning here because there are no like surprising names on this list, right? It's like all 
guys that are currently high end players or have been high end players. You know, Hideki Matsuyama dominated this event. Um, you know, for he won twice and came top five. I think I think it was like five straight years he came like top five here. Um, hasn't been as good the last couple of years, but he's still fifth on this list. You know, Ricky Fowler's done well here when he was playing well. Um, I, I guess you know Sahit Tagala and Billy Horschel the only are the only two semi surprises. Um, but otherwise, you know, the top ten in event history is. Um, the elite players in this field. And that's, and then so par five scoring, the two things about this course that kind of stand out is different from usual off the tee matters more here than usual. You want to ideally be, you know, long and accurate. If nothing else, like you, you really want to lean towards longer hitters here. And then par five scoring is more important here than usual. I looked at um, top five finishers at this event gain, 2.7 strokes to the field on just the par fives alone. So just the, what, 12 par fives they play during the week that they're gaining, you know, nearly three strokes to the field just on those holes. So you, re- you really got to capitalize on those par fives this week, which does kind of, you know, again, um, jive with the fact that you want these longer hitters off the tee. Those guys tend to score well on the par five. So you see the um, top five in par scoring here over the last 12 months, Scotty Scheffler coming in first, not a big surprise. Wyndham Clark, Second, another, you know, big driver of the ball. Then you do have some, you know, more surprising names down the list here. Davis Thompson, someone who I think has has flashed at this tournament at least once. Um, KH Lee, I know, has flashed at this tournament at least once. You do have um, Sungjae, Scheffler, and Ricky, I think, are the three guys who appear on both of these top ten lists. Okay. Yeah, Ricky uh, down to 50 to 1. He's been hovering around 100 to 1 the last few events, but right. he's he's played really well here before. I think he's got two runner ups and a win, I believe. So, um, problem is, is that even though he did play a little bit better last week, his game is still not there. So, you yeah. would expect this is a really good week for Ricky to maybe get back into a swing of things with a top 20 or maybe a top 10. I'm not sure I'd take him to win. Uh, but again, never know. So, uh, I tell you what's crazy about Ricky, it's the it's the putter that's been letting him down. You know, the, the the last the, at the at eighteen at you know, last week at Pebble Beach and then at the Century, he lost nearly five strokes putting in both of those events, which yeah, is that's, strange to yeah. see. So once he gets that done, and you know he's more than capable, uh, he'll be very uh, tough to beat. So keep an eye on him this week if he gets off to a good start with the putter. Okay, uh, another. Uh, Another trend uh, to keep in mind, the average world ranking of all first-time winners since keeping uh, since keeping track of the rankings uh, is 69.2. So uh, that's a – and again, that's what happens when you don't have a lot of top 10 world-ranked players playing. But for the last five, going on what you mentioned before, uh, for the last five winners did rank in the top 20. Only three of the last 21 winners ranked outside the top 100. J.B. Holmes has the biggest, uh, highest ranking of 465th, winning in 2006. Um, And uh, as far as live betting throughout the weekend, and you want to check the link out in the description for our Discord channel because we will uh, make comments and suggestions during any event especially if something pops up like that's uh, important to reference from live wagering and just dating back to 37 events. Cause that's what we were going on since they've been here uh, at this golf course at uh, uh, TPC Scottsdale. Uh, so uh, if you want to consider it, um, keep in mind that no winner has ever started the final round outside the top eight. So you want to be in the top eight entering the final round. And 40% of all-time winning players, that's 15 of 37, came into the final round with the lead uh, and ended up winning. So almost 50% had the lead and ended up winning. But seven of the last 14 winners were at least three shots back after round three. Kyle Stanley was the one who has the, uh, the biggest comeback. In 2012, he was eight shots back in the final round. And uh, don't worry too much, too, about coming out of the first round behind because even though 13 of the last 22 started outside the – I mean, 13 of the last 22 did start outside the top 10, including the last four. Nine of the last 22 started four shots back or more, including six shots, seven shots, and ten shots back 
after round one. So I'm not sure why that's the case here at Phoenix, but uh, if you're behind early at Phoenix, yeah. don't worry about it. Uh, even though when you are entering the final round, you kind of do want to be uh, in that top eight. So keep that in mind. It definitely feels like an event where you can come from behind because the, the back nine, um, the, the, the back nine's awesome here. You know, obviously um, have the stadium hole 16, 17 is the drivable um, par four where you can, you know, make birdie, you can make, make bogey or double bogey pretty easily. And then there's, there's some other tough par fours on the back nine. So you, I feel like you can see a lot of um, leaderboard movement on the back nine here, especially on Sunday. All right, let's get with the field. And so look, it's all at the top. It's all about Scotty and JT and with Scotty. Look, here's the deal. And we talk about this a lot where even though on a regular basis, it makes no sense at all with these fields. We're already seeing it this year with these crazy winners to, 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 to cause you got to put up a lot of money, invest a lot of money on Scotty Scheffler at five to one. But this is one of those weeks where I'm going to say, if you're going to do it a few times a year, if you're going to risk it at four to one, five to one, this would be the this would be the event that I would say go right ahead. If you have a few hundred bucks, you want to put it all on Scotty Scheffler, I'm all right with that. And obviously, the same thing with Justin Thomas. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm with you on Scotty and man. I- Winning this event three times in a row would be crazy, but you know, like I said, just looking at his his putting numbers here, um, last year gained four point two strokes putting, um, twenty twenty two gained six point five strokes putting, twenty twenty one gained five point one strokes putting. This is Scotty Shuffler, who usually is losing strokes to the field putting, but whatever it is about these greens, um, he tends to like him. And again, if he if he gains four strokes putting again this week, he's it's probably over. gonna win. So yeah, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to bet him five to one just doesn't, doesn't get me going in, in golf. Um, but again, and, 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 you know, data golf's numbers back it up. They, they say, you know, he, he basically should be at this price. So it's a, it's a fine bet if you want to make that your card for the week. I'll give you something to, to do. And, 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 and look, parlays, let's keep this in mind. Parlays in, uh, in any sport, uh, it's important that you understand that, if you're going to do a parlay, it's usually best to do it when the event or the, the games are at the same time. Uh, if, for instance, if you do a parlay with, let's say you do a European tour event and it ends at 12 o'clock and then you can hedge your bet. I mean, you can go right to the final round and you can parlay it, whatever. You've got the, okay, you've got the, and the same thing with football. you got a game at one, you got a game at four. That's when you want to think about not doing it. And the reason I'm saying that is because you're only making a little bit more money than if you just do a straight bet. What you're going to do is do that 1 o'clock straight bet, and then whatever money you make off the 1 o'clock straight bet, just put it on 4 o'clock. It's the same thing. You're making a little bit more, and you could also you know, change your mind or whatever. Um, but when it does make sense is when you do have it going on at the same time. Uh, or of course, if you're also doing something where you have an, uh, a four day event, because the odds obviously change. So this would be a week where I would say, you know what, maybe you do Scotty Scheffler and John Rahm. I mean, John Rahm is four to one to win to live this week. Scheffler is five to one. I did it. I put, I put, I think $3 down and it's a hundred bucks. There you go. So why not? I mean, this way. Uh, you're in a, you're in a situation where, uh, and by the way, you could do the same thing with the European event. Like I said, that does end early. So, uh, it, let's say you like someone in that event you, and you put straight money on them. Like my Lombard guy who almost won again, he's, he's going to win one of these weeks and I'm going to cash in. <laughs> so let's say he wins and you put mo- straight money on him, but then you throw a couple of bucks on him at 18 to one this week with Scheffler. I just told you Rom at four to one with Scheffler. I only had to put three bucks to make a hundred. So just imagine what you can make if you put Lombard at 18 to one in Scheffler. Now you make it several hundred bucks. And, and then let's say Lombard wins now. And now you're in a great position because now you got Scheffler sitting there uh, going into the <laughs> final round. If he's winning or if he's in contention, uh, because obviously you can still do your own, do your own live betting, and uh, mm-hmm. especially if one of your players that you already put money on in the beginning of the week is not there. So this is just some um, some tips uh, of of how I've been able to uh, circumvent these odds uh, and try to take advantage of them as best I can. Justin Thomas, 
Uh, in his last six events, all top 12s, including 6th, 5th, 4th, 3rd, and 3rd. Who knows if Justin Thomas wins on Sunday or Monday, if there would have been a Sunday or a Monday. Uh, it just mm. didn't work out for Justin. But uh, he is red hot, and he is excellent at this event as well. Seven top 20s in nine appearances with three top fives. His last five appearances, all top 15s, including four top 10s and three top fives. I picked him last year on my one and done. And even though he didn't win, he had a top five. And it ended up being his only top five of the year. So it it worked out for him, even though my one and done sucked last year. But that's the question. Again, you're going to have this week. Is as much as we like Scheffler and Thomas, this is not a signature event. Right. Right. Yeah. And I also think Justin Thomas is going to be very popular as a one and done play. So, yep. uh, man. If Justin Thomas wins this event, I'm I'm gonna be in a bad place <laughs> because I was all over him last week and man, he played well enough to win. I watched almost every hole he played because I was betting him and he was on the, the feature groups on ESPN Plus. He was hitting it awesome, could not make a putt. Um, so yeah, he is super alive to win this event. I came I came I woke up Monday morning and Justin Thomas was 16 to one on DraftKings because, you know, at that point, Victor Hovland and Xander Shoffley were still uh-huh. in the field. And I, I came close to hitting Thomas at 16 to one. I didn't do it. The withdrawals came. He's down to 10 to one. I, I can't quite get there at 10 to one, but, um, yeah. he is super alive to win this event. And, um, I'm hoping he doesn't because I, I want to bet him again next week at Riviera. Um, I think, I think with, a strong, with, with a stronger field, he might be back up to like 20 to one. I would love to bet him at that one, but, um, I, I didn't bet him this week praying he doesn't win. <laughs> well, again, cause that, that is the thing is that, all right, well, let's say, yeah. Cause if he does win, like you said, a lot, a lot of people are going to bet on him this week and one and done. Yep. The only good thing is, is that they've wasted him on Phoenix. And we, if we get him in a signature right. event, then we're besting them, but you gotta you gotta beat them, and it's not easy. Yeah. But especially if he wins this week, it almost you're like, all right, I gotta wait now for another event because the chances of winning back to back weeks are just pretty slim. So. Yeah, but yeah, but between the fact that this isn't elevated and that he's gonna be super popular, I don't think he's a great one and done play. I agree. This week. Yeah. So. Yep, I agree. But like you said, we yeah, we just have to sit there. That's why it's a good idea to just uh, see. I know it's ten to one, and I I I can't invest a lot of money on him, but I have invested enough on him just to try to make something. Because if he does win, I mean, I have to make something on him. I just have to. I can't be shut out the entire week if he wins, and then lose on fantasy. And then, you know, I mean, so I have to make at least, even if it's just make my money back, I got to make some, but I can't invest heavily in him or Scheffler. It's just, it's too low. Um, He's back. He's back. He's just, he's the Justin Thomas. That's right. 2022 and and earlier, whatever happened last year is gone. And I think Justin Thomas is going to win very soon. I I hope it's not this week. And and when he does watch out, he's going to be very dangerous. Oh, you know what? We didn't talk about this last week and I haven't even checked, but uh as of last week he was still 30 to 1 in the majors wow check it out i might i might go around and see what he is for the masters because i've always thought he's a guy who's going to win the masters at some point yep um so tell you what i made a i made a masters bet um about a week ago okay will will zelatoris all right, there you go. I like it. <laughs> I saw, what was he? I've seen, I've seen uh, forty to one. Okay, I'm surprised seen, he wasn't better than I've that. Seen, actually, I've seen enough. Yeah, I think it's lower than he was maybe a month ago. But probably, yeah. And on DraftKings, Thomas is down to twenty two to one for the Masters. And what about missed, the others? Might have missed the. 30s. He's probably higher on the others though, because the Masters is probably smaller field. U.S. O- U.S. Open, he's twenty five to one. Okay. PGA Championship, which is where he dominates he plays very well he is 28 to one that's, okay that's that's not a bad one so he's coming down but yeah Dostoj is still good because he could easily easily by the time he gets even to the masters he could easily be 14 yep. to one by then 12 for to one sure. for sure for sure so all right uh now you've got the next grouping you have homa spieth uh we, we could even throw in burns and clark so clark 
winning two weeks in a row, uh, that's going to be really hard to do, even though he didn't, you know, he didn't legitimately kind of win. So maybe that, uh, that that's something to keep an eye on. But it also is a good thing for, for Clark because now uh, he's got his game going again, which is important. And you would think that his game fits uh, this golf course, um, sure. e- even though like uh, historically he's played it five times. He has just one top 10, but that was last year when he finished 10th. And that's another thing that the trends tell you is a lot of guys that have won here recently have had at least a a top 10 or something Mm -hmm. that good in prior uh, events here, uh, appearances here. So um, Homa, meanwhile, just one top 10, but at least he has one. He's made all five cuts, but nothing great here so far. And Jordan Spieth has four top tens, sixth last year. Uh, but Jordan is, is again, after that disappointing showing at Pebble last week. I mean, that's yeah. two straight years of, of being disappointing at Pebble, which is kind of strange. Um, I don't know. You get the feeling that Jordan is going to kind of probably come out of nowhere one of these weeks when he's not exactly playing great. Could be this week when he's not exactly on his game from the week before and he's just going to win and because that's what he does. But... Uh, out of this group, Clark and I, and also Burns, by the way, Burns had missed three of his first four cuts here, but then was sixth last year. So Burns, Spieth, Homa, and um, Clark. Um, I know where you're going because I'm going to uh, right. put our picks picks up right now. You like Clark? Yeah, Clark is a bet for me. Um, among among the other three, I Burns was the one I looked closest at. Um, I like how he's playing out. You know, he obviously played well at a- Amex. I think there's uh, some crossover between those two courses, you know, both kind of desert golf courses. Uh, Homa and Spieth just struggled enough last week to kind of get me off them. You know, not, not to say they can't bounce right back and win. Um, but yeah, I mean, Clark, I know winning back to back would be tough. He did last year win Wells Fargo and the U S open in the span of four starts for him. So he's kind of done this before where he's rattled off a couple wins in a short time span. Um, he is 16th in course history here over the last five years. Like you said, the 10th place last year, he's putted well on these greens. He's gained strokes putting in three straight appearances here. And like we, we said earlier on that par five scoring list, he's the second best par five scorer in this field. He's obviously a long driver of the golf ball. So I do think um, this is a good fit for Wyndham Clark. I think he, 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 he could go back to back. I'm going to pop up the picks right now. My first pick is Justin Thomas, fifteen dollars out of the hundred. I just did it to get my money back if he wins. Like I said, I don't want to not have. I have to have something on him. So I, I, at least I figured, all right, if he wins, I still think. I, 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 if we're making like just hey, who do you like? You can only put money down on one player. What are you doing? I'm putting money on Justin Thomas. I don't know about you, but that's that's what I'm. You know, again, if if your money depended on it, I have to make yeah. money. I got to pay a bill. I can only do it on one player. <laughs> I'm, I'm putting it on Justin Thomas. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for the sake of my sanity, I probably should. Um, but I, you know, I'm trying to stay disciplined and back guys at sure. good value. Yeah. I just don't, you know. So I, go, you know, going back to to data golf, and you're know, not that their you know projections here are, are the gospel and are perfect, but you know, again, they have Scotty Scheffler. His Fair value is plus five thirty. Justin Thomas's fair value is basically sixteen to one. Sure. You know, yeah. Again, which is which is what he was. Uh, I would agree with Monday that. Mor- what he was on Monday morning, and I, I wish I had hit him then. But um, ten, ten to one is just a bit too short for me. Yeah, because uh, the, some of the, especially Homa. I mean, you know, Homa's been winning. You know, he's had wins, and and right. Justin just hasn't had a win in a while, and that that means something. You have to, you got to get that monkey off your back. And he, he hasn't been able to because let's keep this in mind. I mean, he would he had a perfect opportunity to win Amex. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Yep. But he yep. didn't do anything. He he was like what, three under par? All you had to do is be like five or six under par. It's yours. And he yep. let an amateur basically outplay him on Sunday. So as good yep. as he's playing, 
it, 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 there is a little bit of you know you got to get that you got to get that monkey off your back to win again. Yeah, I think there's something to be said even for someone like Justin Thomas who just you know it had been a year plus since he'd been in the mix. There's you know, something to getting back in that position and just you know feeling that pressure again on Sunday. And now again, now now that he's done it, he's got it. Yep. I think yeah. Again, I think he's going to win soon. All right. Uh, now all, uh, let's uh, run through some of these others, and because we got a lot in this grouping here. Matter of fact, on is your top pick at 25 to one and boy does his numbers come down he was 40 to one just about 24 hours ago so everybody is jumping on uh our boy benny on who has two top tens on this golf course 31st last week 25 to one that's about you can't go lower than that um but yeah yeah i i (laughs) I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's getting to the point now where it's starting to get a little low. Yeah. The, the number definitely feels gross. Now what makes me feel better about it again, referencing data golf, they have been on as the fourth, most likely player to win this event. They have Scotty Scheffler one, Justin Thomas two, Max Homa three, Ben on four, and they have his, you know, fair value number at 27 to one. So, okay. You know, again, according to their their stuff, um, this isn't really a, a, a bad number for Ben on it. Feels that way, but he just he he checks all the boxes for me this week. He's obviously playing well. Um, you mentioned the finishes. He is actually second in this field in total strokes gained over the last month. Um, he's 19th in course history over the last five years. That includes a ninth place in 2020, um, a 20th place in 2019. So he's you know he's been up there a couple times in this tournament, and then just course fit wise. Over the last 12 months, we talked about off the tee game being important. He's seventh best in this field, strokes gain off the tee. Over the last 12 months, he's 25th best in par five scoring. So it makes sense that he would play well here. And let's keep in mind, he has never won a PGA Tour event, uh, but he's going to get it done this year. And he's a definite look, good-looking one-and-done candidate for sure. Yes. I've already, I've already taken him. Uh, of course, missed out on when he lost the playoff. Mm. I've taken post on. I like him this week. You know, Thigal is already off my board. And he yep. could be somebody to keep an eye on this week because he had that big showing in his first appearance where he kind of blew it down the stretch but still finished third. Um, <laughs> the uh, Might as well finish with yours because you you only have yeah. three and your other is M at 30 to 1. And Sung Jae, uh, just like we, we talked about some of these other guys, uh, he has some good experience here. Uh, all four of his appearances were top 35s, including two top 10s. Yeah, I'm really trying to follow these trends of, you know, guys who have played well here in the past um, and just guys in this, you know, 11 to 50 to one range that have won here nine straight times. That's why I kind of went with three of these guys in this mid range. Sung Jay, um, disappointing the first two rounds at Pebble, but he closed strong. He shot six under on Saturday. Most people didn't even probably realize it because he was so far down the leaderboard, but he did have a good um, Saturday, which I like to see. Um, like we said, fourth in event history over the last five years. He came, Sung Jae came sixth place here last year, 17th in 2021, 34th in 2020, seventh in 2019, gained strokes putting in all four of those appearances. So he's someone who is, you know, has done well on these greens. Um, and another guy, you know, you don't think of Sung Jay, he's not a long hitter, um, but he is 12th best strokes gain off the tee over the last 12 months in this field. And he's also third best in par five scoring. So th- despite the fact that he's not, you know, super long, he does do well on par fives. I think, you know, that explains why he's done so well here in the past. Yeah. And there's another one that uh, needs to kind of break through and get an, an, another win on the PG tour. Okay, for sure. Now, um, my picks are several of them are around here, including post on. So post on um, at thirty to one. I know it, it it doesn't look like this is a good fit for him, but uh, and he, he does have an eleventh, uh, which was a few years ago. But the guy is just red hot right now. He's got th- he's made thirteen straight cuts. Eleven of those are top twenty five. Seven top tens. Three top fives and a runner up. He's just too hot for me at that number um, uh, to pass up. And so that, that's why I think uh, I made him. I think he's my really my number one pick outside of Justin Thomas. Uh, but he's like my number one pick. And and then I have three others in this grouping: Bo Hostler at forty five to one, Cameron Young at thirty five to one, and Eric Cole at forty to one. Now Young is probably out of left field a little bit, but 
I, all you have to do is take a look at Clark last week. Uh, yep. Doesn't really show much at this golf course, but uh, I, I, let's remember his 64th last year. He had a 26th the first time he, he played here, which is okay. The 64th last year, he had no rest. He finished second in a Saudi event and with no rest came here and played Phoenix. To me, that's a good enough excuse of why he didn't have a great week. Uh, mm -hmm. He had a pretty good showing overseas just a few uh, weeks ago. He's still trying to get his game going. I could see Young pulling a, a Clark uh, uh, this week because I think his game is tailor-made for this golf course. Cole, meanwhile, what could we say about Cole? Um, you know, uh, if you look at it, he had, it, once again, he's playing. Uh, he hasn't missed an event so far this year. Mm -hmm. 13 top 35s in his last 14 Eight top 15s, four top fives, and a runner-up. He'll be playing here for the first time. Hostler just continues to be hot. Nine straight cuts with six top 20s, three top 10s, and a runner-up. His best finish on this course was last year when he finished 14th. Uh, so uh, what do you think about um, uh, those players there? Cole, Hostler, uh, Poston, and Young. Yeah, I mentioned um, Ben On being second in strokes gain total over the last month. First on that list is JT Poston. So, you know, he's he's the hottest golfer in this field. So I think he makes a lot of sense. Cam Young, I looked at and considered. Um, and like you said, you know, the course history isn't awesome here, but he should. You talk about someone who's good off the tee and is a good par five scorer. Like yeah. that's, that's Cam Young. So he, he should be good here. I think, you know, 35 to one, I think he's even, he might even still be 40 to one on some other places. Um, I, I think, I think he's definitely someone to consider. I think it makes a lot of sense. All right. And then as far as uh, other players that we did not take around here, uh, Fitzpatrick is 30 to one. Uh, he, yep. he, he was 29th last year and 10th in his first uh, go around. So that's pretty strong. Um, so keep an eye on, on, on Fitzpatrick, you know, the gal 35 to one Matsuyama, who's been dominant here with the two wins. He's 35 to one. Um, anybody else in this range that you were keeping an eye on? Tagala is the one I, I looked at the most in this range. Um, yeah. You know, Hideki's tough. Like the, the dominance here has, is kind of a, a ways back now. True. He hasn't been great the last couple times here. Yep. And he just obviously hasn't been great so far this year. So I think it's a him. So, yes. Yeah, so a hit. I mean, you talked about, uh, that was two years ago. He, he, uh, was in the mix down the stretch. Right. And he got yes. just a brutal break on 17. He hit a drive that looked like he was going on the green and took like a crazy bounce to the left, ended up in the water. So, um, I, I think he's definitely in play. You know, he has not been great his last couple tournaments, but we, we talked about Sahith in the past. Like he's just super volatile from week to week. He's going to either miss the cut or he's going to be top 10. Um, and I think, you know, I think 35 to one is a pretty fair number for him. Yeah. And then other, uh, uh, other players to keep in mind, uh, Tom Kim uh, did not play all that well last year at one under par. He was 50th Ricky Fowler. Uh, again, he's got the two runner ups in a win. 10th last year, so but his odds are now down, like we said, about 50, 55 to 1. Adam Scott uh, hasn't played here only once uh, a couple of years ago, 38th, but he continues to play well. And, uh, you know, you just get the feeling that sometime this year, because it's been a while for yeah. Adam, that uh, <laughs> sometime this year he might break through again. I'm already loading up my bet on Adam Scott next week. I think we talked oh, about this. That's but right. Yes, he's been he's been awesome at he's been awesome at Riviera, and he is playing well, like you said. So I'm hoping I'm hoping to get another. We probably should. We'll probably get longer odds next week. I would guess, despite the good course history at Riviera, just with it being a stronger field. If we can get you know Scott, at, you know sixty to one, maybe I'll I'll definitely be making that bet. The two guys on this page here who I considered are um, Siwoo Kim and Akshay. Batia. Um, I think, you know, they both just pop as good course fits here. You know, Cebu sixth best in this field strokes gain off the tee. Um, he's also a pretty good par five scorer. Akshay kind of same deal. 17th best off the tee, 22nd best in approach. So I think, you know, th neither of those guys have Cebu has pretty poor course history. I think Akshay has yeah. never played here. Um, so that's what kind of pushed me off them eventually. But I, I do think, you know, fit wise, they, they both should play well here. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Uh, Akshay, in his last four, he has three top 15s on the season. Yep. So he is playing well. Uh, Adam Hadwin has made eight of nine cuts, and his 10th place finish last year was his only top 10. Uh, Brian Harmon, the USD uh, Open champion, has made nine of 10 cuts, but he's never had anything better than a top 25 here. Um, 
look, D Tree is just playing so well right now, yeah. and uh, you get the feeling that okay, because this is a kid that needed time. He came over from Europe, didn't have a lot of wins there, uh, none, I believe. Uh, matter of fact, he's only had one win in Europe, and that was in a challenger. That's like the KFT, you know. So he has one win that was back in 2016. Um, but he decided to take his lumps here in the States, and I think he's taken his lumps, and now he's starting to develop. So uh, he's a dangerous player, and he's trending in the right direction. Uh, Berger's playing this week, and he has uh, four top 15s in eight appearances, but uh, don't want to take Berger just yet uh, until mm-hmm. maybe you see him contending uh, for, uh, an, uh, for a win. Billy Horschel has made 10 of 11 cuts, um, but overall, he's missed three of his last four cuts on tour. I'll just show you how crazy things can be. Nick Taylor had never had a top 45 in eight appearances on this golf course until last year when he was second to Scotty Scheffler. So you just never know. I'm going to give you a long shot this week to keep an eye on because you Eric. opened the, cat, the, the bag on this one, and that's Mark covered. I mean, why nice. not? I mean, he has gotten better each time out in his last five events, including 20th and then 4th. So he's coming off a 4th place finish, and he does have a top 10 here, which was about four years ago. What are his odds? He's still probably 150 or something? No, he was. Uh, he's now down to 70, 80 to 1. Oh, pe- people are on him. Okay. Yep. okay. The, the other guy in that range, who um, his odds have dropped, um, Kevin Yu. Who I think Kevin we've talked you. about a few times. Uh, he, he's he's an excellent. He's a long driver yes. of the ball. He's um, tenth best in this field. Strokes gained off the tee over the last twelve months. He's even been even better than that lately. So, um, you know, another guy with I think no course history here, but he, he's a guy who you know should 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 do well here. And maybe a couple of uh, other long shots to keep an eye on: uh, Stevens, Sam Stevens, and Austin Eckroat. Uh, they're getting Akro, big odds. Akro was the one I Akro was the one I was going to bring up. Yeah, my my guy Akro, um, another guy who you know plenty long off the tee um, should do well here. Um, He's one hundred and thirty to one. Yep, yeah, I like that. And Stevens is three hundred to one. But I'm going to wow. gi- I'm going to give three hundred. Is... Yeah, that's, that's big. Nice. I'm going to give that's you my big, official yeah. long shot. You ready? My long shot this week. Ready. Ready. All right, he is one hundred and fifty to one. There's the hundred. Let me see if I can guess. Rate. Jake Knapp. Bingo. He was good at Tory. You got it. He was yeah. good at Tory. Uh, uh, some people may not know Jake Knapp, and whether or not you want to get, even, I mean, if he's in contention again, you'll you'll hear. Yeah. Every time he's in contention, you'll hear his bartender story, uh, or his <laughs> security story, but. Um, the fact is, uh, you know, he's 29, so he, he's taking the long road. But he has three – I believe he has uh, three wins on the Canadian Tour. And since the start of uh, his season in June of 22, because he didn't start the season until like middle of the year right there in June of 22. Uh, since that, he was ranked 1,476. He's now 106th in the world. And that's because he finished first, second, and third out of 10 Canadian events. Um, and that was, I believe, uh, last year or in 2022, excuse me. Then last year on the KFT tour, he had 10 top 10s and ended the year 172nd. Um, this year on the PGA tour, 70th miscut, not so good. But then, like you mentioned, the third of Tory Pines. That's why he's up to 106th in the world. And he just fits exactly what's been going on this year on the PGA tour. Doesn't he? He just fits it. For sure. It's like, who's Jake Knapp? That's basically what we've been dealing with this year. So I figured why not? I'll throw Jake Knapp in there as a long yeah, shot. I mean, it should be a good course for him too, because he's a long hitter of the golf ball, which I think, you know, helped him at Torrey. Um, the, the, the guy, the guy that pops to me and you've, you mentioned him a few minutes ago on that showing right now at 150 is, is, is Nick Taylor. Oh he's yeah. In the mix sure. here. And it's, it's just, it's just playing good golf. You know, won, won a won a tournament last year, so I think I think Nick Taylor at 150. I think that that's too long for him. Yeah, that's because uh, uh, m- maybe he just wasn't very good at this golf course because he just wasn't all that very good up <laughs> until uh, last year. I think that's right. I think that's right. Yeah. yeah. So all right. So there you go. 
uh, we are, uh, oh, just the one and done's as a wrap mm. because Jan also has her one and done. So let me get Jan's. Jan's three top one and done's are going to be Ben on, Sam yep. Burns, uh, and Thagala. So those are her top three okay. uh, on Burns and Thagala. And my top three are Cole, Hostler, and Young. Because again, just can't take uh, Justin Thomas this week, just like you. Just can't do it. Right. Um, but Cole, Hostler, and Young, those are my three. I haven't decided yet who my one will be. Uh, uh, who are you going with? Who, who, you, who are your top options? Yeah, I, I'm leaning towards using Ben on here. Um, I just think, and, and I hope he's not too popular. That's the only thing that would get me off him is if I think he's going to be super popular, which he, he might end up being what we'll see for the next you know, 24 hours go. I just think, I think it's, it's, you know, he's playing well, good course history. I want to use someone in that range at an event like this. It's not, it's not elevated. You know, it's, it's a smaller purse. I don't want, I don't really want to burn someone like Justin Thomas when it's not an elevated purse. So I think Ben on makes a lot of sense. Um, Burns is someone I'm considering the other guy I'll throw out there who we didn't talk about at all as a one and done that I think will be low owned is Minwoo Lee. I, you talk about a course that, that favors long hitters. That's Minwoo. Um, we also, we didn't even talk about it, but strokes gain around the green tends to be more important here. Oh than yeah. The average course. And Minwoo has an awesome short game where Minwoo is not good is on approach. He's not a good iron player, but that's mitigated a bit at this course. So I do think it's a pretty good course fit for Minwoo. Yep, and uh, we've talked about him uh, several times already this season. Uh, first time PG Tour full card member. Uh, he is trending in the wrong direction now. That's why I stood yeah. away from him because just like you, that's the first thing I popped up. I'm like, hey, he's on my list, but I just don't like the way he's trending. Uh, it's just the exact wrong way you want to see someone trend. But hey, and it's his first time here too. So uh, not easy to win on your first uh, go around. And uh, I'm gonna, we're going to close by me asking. So you, so on Burns and Minwulu, those are your top three options. Yep. Okay. Correct. Uh, yep. I, I have to ask you, you, you didn't mention, I mean, we're on the West Coast and you basically said nothing about Max Homa. <laughs> yeah, this is like quasi West Coast. I like Max in California on the, the pure Poa Green. That's why but I wait, doesn't he him. have a win in, was it Las Vegas or... And it might have been Arizona. He has like a win in one of those, you know, down the fall, off west. Down the fall, down the fall, the fall swing. Might maybe. have been. Did he win? Did he win Shriners? Was it? No. Um, you know, I don't, it, I don't pay is Fortnite? Oh, Fort. Yeah, yeah, Fortnite. Yeah. Where, where is that? Where is Fortnite? Is that Vegas? Silverado. Sil Silverado. Colorado. Oh, let's, oh, okay, in Nevada then. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, or Colorado. I don't remember. I don't know. I'm not. We don't live in the west, so. I love. I love Max. Um can't can't bet him every week next week he's going to be like nine to one because it's riviera so yeah but um, everyone's going to have him that's why you want to take a guy like uh well that's where justin thomas comes in because hopefully everyone will take him this week and he won't win so yeah justin thomas will be a consideration uh for me next week for one and done absolutely and and adam scott too so those are a couple names to keep an eye on already for next week. So uh, we'll be back again next Tuesday morning. And let us know if you have any questions or comments. Uh, you can uh, post that on the uh, message board. Uh, of course, there's a video. You can hopefully subscribe to our new golf channel, Tee Off with Jan Stevenson. Uh, we are posting the videos right now, both on Jan's new channel and, of course, still on Prime Sports Network. So uh, we'll see you guys again next week when we get into another signature event, the Genesis. Um, and uh, what's the what's the course, Genesis, again? Where is that? R Riviera. Riviera. Okay. Yeah. That's, my favorite, uh, there you my go. Favorite, uh, favorite tournament of the year. That's next week. So stay tuned. And uh, we'll see you guys again real soon.